Welcome to episode three of the Ulster Hurling Podcast. In this episode, we will look at skills testing and how it can help your commogues and hurlers to improve. The episode is timestamped for your ease, so you can jump right to the section you want to see, and the links mentioned are in the description below. Make sure and subscribe to the channel, which will let you know as soon as a new episode is live and also keep you up to date with other Ulster GA releases. And if you have any questions or queries on the episode, please use the comment section below. In this episode, I will be joined by... Hi, I'm Colin Dillon, uh, Ulster Regional Hurling Development Officer based within Tyrone. Hi, I'm Ryan Gaffney and I'm Growth and Participation Officer for Ulster Camogie. Um, hi, Danny Toner, Regional Hurling Development Officer for Down and Belfast in line with the Galefast project. I believe skill testing can be of great benefit uh, to both players and coaches. We're all aware of the failure skills, the primary school skills, but outside of that, there wouldn't be too many really well documented. And I believe it's a thing that clubs uh, throughout the country and, well, particularly Ulster, can really hone in on and benefit on. Uh, I see three main benefits to skill testing. Uh, one would be, as, as with all things, the player is at the focus or at the centre of all that. Skill testing will benefit players. Uh, we're probably targeting at nursery through to, as far as I can see, maybe up under 16 would benefit. Uh, if a kid can see that they're improving, that they'll improve. Okay, And, and second benefit that I personally see to it is uh, very often coaches think players are improving. They think anecdotally the players are improving. They're talking amongst themselves. But if a coach can see and they can monitor how the players are improving uh, throughout the year, be it three simple tests at the beginning of the year, middle of the year, it helps uh, the coach analyze and, and just pretty much check their progression throughout the year. And thirdly, from a coach's point of view, I think skills testing helps coaches evaluate their own coaching. Uh, very often, coaches will will roll out the same sessions uh, and think we're improving players. Whereas, if we have five to seven tests uh, that we can't that we work on throughout the year, coaches can uh, almost evaluate the, the effectiveness of their coaching. Uh, if 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 player X is improving in striking but not improving on their pickups uh, after a test, the coach can look at their coaching and reevaluate. Uh, and simply change the way they're coaching or, emph- or put more emphasis on a certain skill. Uh, so that, that would be my three main areas or three main reasons why we would skill test. If your club is keen to design their own skills test, I would advise getting as many coaches from within the club involved in the process. Then we can see a clear pathway for skills to de- development to all age groups. Skills testing should be easy to administer. Basically, just testing how good your players are at their skills. During the pandemic, there have been a number of skills challenges issued across the country. I wonder, did you take part in any? Like this touch wall ball one here by hurting all-star Patrick Horgan. If it's good enough for this man, it's surely good enough for everyone else. There are some great resources out there, so don't think that you need to go and make up new tests. Why not have a look at these resources and use them or adapt them to suit your needs? So just as Ryan was touching on there, a club template, uh, I have come across Middletown GA down in County Cork has their own skills templates set out for their club uh, from the ages of six right up to the age of 12. Six to eight year olds being foundation skills, such as they have the correct swing technique, uh, then moving on to a ground strike. Uh, the improver skills being 9 to 10 year olds. Uh, so it, it, it includes skills such as roll lifting, jab lifting, catching. Uh, and then the advanced skills, which is aimed at 11 to 12 year olds. And it is things like striking from the hand uh, and striking the slitter on the uh, on the move as well. So this, this gives the club uh, something that they can pass on to coaches uh, in above their age groups, uh, so that they know what sort of players they have, who is strong, who is weak, and where they need to improve moving forward. Another popular skills test to use would be the fail in the gales on the 14 uh, hurling skills test. This test uh, has six different stages number one being the ground strike, 
Number two, free taken. Jab lift and strike, ground cut, ball control, and then finishing with the long puck. The participants are asked to run through these tests, getting scores for dip uh, on the graded on each in each on each stage and can achieve a maximum overall score of 300. A real must uh, resource for coaches to get their hands on would be the Kilkenny J Child and Youth Player Pathway, the hurler they call it. Uh, this is a great resource, not only for skills testing, but also looking at a holistic approach to player development pathway. It gives references for every age group, and then tucked in at the back of the whole section is the skills targets from age 2 to 18. Within the skills target section, it breaks down a number of different activities and drills and games for you to test your players out from the different age groups. Giving them a wee scoring system where it's very easy for you to, as a coach, market uh, and also just to see where your players are coming along throughout the year. This also includes the previously mentioned uh, under 14 uh, FILA skills competition and, and the same program for that there. Uh, and then it's basically adjusted it for the different age groups. A real gem of a resource. As with all things or all aspects of the game at the minute, there's so many resources out there. And um, one resource I've used in terms of skill testing would be the Connet GA website. Um, just a simple tab on the website for non-football skills testing. A uh, really quick eight minute video that focuses on striking, solo running and point scoring. Um, really easy to follow. Uh, the games and drills and tests are all well outlined and very easy to follow for club coaches. One of the resources I would advise using would be the Revelog coaching website. Um, on this website you can find any tutorials on how to carry out the skills testing. They even have their own Excel sheet on how to set out the skills for the different age groups and uh, there's also online skills challenges that the kids can practice at home. Another brilliant resource that I found very useful was the Hurling365 Twitter page carried out by Wexford senior players throughout the lockdown period. On their main page they have a list of 23 different hurling skills challenges that any player can take part in while at home or at the pitch. These skills challenges range from easier ones to harder ones and can be carried out with your team based on your players' abilities. Videos to accompany some of these skills can be found also on YouTube being performed by their senior players. So as you can see, there's a number of different skills test resources out there and on the net, which can be very easily used or adapted. Do check out these resources and try and use them to your own event, to your own advantage. You could turn your drills into a bit of a competition by using these. Um, as mentioned before by the boys, you could also use these uh, tests to for your club in order to bring them up through the different age groups. One thing to remember is just keep it simple. Keep it very simple whenever you're setting them out. Make it easy to run uh, and make it easy to set up. Uh, the easier it is to replicate it, the easier it will be to do. And the better chance you have of the kids doing it at home themselves and you being able to run them out with your other fellow coaches. Here you can see uh, a very simple scoring chart. Uh, I got this one off Martin Fogarty uh, looking at skills. He was actually used it to say your skills how long has it been since you've done these skills within your sessions this could also be used very handy to in order for you to record how your kids are getting on at each of their skills tests another thing that you can do which we hope that you will go and do then is to try and design your own we mentioned before possibly your club could take this on and have certain skills for each age group and there's no right or wrong answer but you'll soon be able to adjust it
our idea would be that just whenever you're running them out, that you make sure that everyone's a winner. There's no losers in this. Uh, you could grade them off as in gold, silver, or bronze. Or you could also turn around and use like the traffic light system and just say you're either red, amber, or green. Meaning that the bottom level is for the people who can do it or can't just make that level, advance it on as, as further and then bring it on again. So what we're going to do now is look at sample skills test. Using Martin Fogarty's Magnificent Seven skills, we're going to look at each skill individually and try and break it down for you as a in beginner, intermediate and advanced. Again, we're not saying that you have to use these, but they're only there to give you an idea of something that you might use, manipulate, or change. Uh, so for catching, uh, the beginner a test could be something as simple as a coach throwing a ball three times to a player standing a distance away. The player must catch the ball and perform the skill properly to succeed. Moving forward then into an intermediate type skill could be classed as something like an overhead catch. The coach or a player strikes the ball off a wall. The player must catch the ball above their head and this can be done either standing still or running into the ball. Moving then into an advanced skill, it can be classed as a game catch. So this can be done under pressure from another player. So if we had one player on the end line, player number two, which is the one being tested, stands on the 45, along with player number three. Player number one then strikes the ball. Player number two has to catch the ball under pressure from player number three. To succeed, they must catch the ball without dropping it on the ground. Looking at the hand passing, a beginner type test is simple enough. A player must hand pass the ball using the correct hand off the wall and catch. An intermediate one could be a player hand passing using his opposite hand off the wall to catch. And an advanced test could be a player hand passes the ball off the hurl and catches on the return. These videos that the Wexford 365 lads have come up with show some of these skills being performed. Another skill that we like to test would be the player's ability to, to raise the ball. So when we're raising the ball, we like to get the kids to practice the roll lift. So in order to, to test that, we would ask the kids, how many roll lifts can they get in 30 seconds? For the intermediate roll lifting drill, set out five cones as the diagram in a star shape or cross shape. Four slitters are placed at the other cones except the one that the player starts at. The player runs to the centre cone, lifts the ball, out to the outside, lifts the ball and replaces it, back to the centre again, and so on till they've done all the balls outside and return to the start. This way the player will have lifted seven slitters and the test is to see how fast you can do it. For advanced players, we might ask them how many can they roll lift using one hand on the hurl, with the key coaching point being to have their hur their, their hurling hand halfway down the hurl. Another way for, for players to lift the ball would be using the jab lift. A beginner's test for the jab lift would be simply putting out five balls, possibly five metres apart, and ask the kids, can they run and uh, lift the ball without missing any? Players, in order to help test their job lifting skills, we would ask them to include the strike. So we uh, put out three hurling balls, placed 20 meter on a 20 meter line, 12 meters apart. The center ball is in line with the center of the goals. The player must job lift the ball into the hand and strike on the run to pass or to strike the ball over the bar. First from the right side and then next on their left side. For an, for an advanced jab lifting drill, 
two players, A and B, start at the same place and only need one ball thrown out about between five and ten yards in front of them. On the whistle, the players compete to jab lift the ball. The person who lifts it is the winner. If this is a bit too advanced, then what you can do is it can be made easier with player B only providing a shadow or a token tackle pressure on player A. So player A would run out to lift the ball and player B would be coming behind them, put a little bit of pressure on them. This can be done two to three times with a score taken. Another skill that we we like to test for would be the child's or the player's ability to solo run the ball and, and their ball control. Starting off with the nursery kids, we would ask them to test if they can balance a bean bag on their herd for 60 seconds. If this is too easy for them, ask them can they balance a, a ball on their herd for 30 seconds. In order to test their, their solo run, we could line out five cones five metres apart and ask the kids to test their ability of running in and out through the cones and time them to see who can get the quickest time. In order to assess a player's ability to control the ball, what we could do is set out six grid poles, place two uh, in, in a line two metres apart. Players must begin at the cone, five metres from the first cone, then jab lift the ball onto their herd, carrying it through the poles around to the end cone, which is five metres from the final cone, and back through to the poles to the start. We can time this here to see who can get the fastest time. But what we would like to do is to make sure that all the players are doing this with, within 15 seconds. Okay, so in terms of uh, skill testing for striking, uh, I looked at basic and intermediate and more so advanced skill testing. Uh, for basic, uh, I was actually I referred to the Kilkenny Player Pathway, an excellent resource for all levels and well worth the read for all coaches and Ulster to have a good look at what they're at. So for basic, they actually started theirs at age two. Maybe we don't need to be looking that early, but um, in terms of striking, uh, they had one simple, they had a few simple tests that were aimed at a certain distance. So it worked from one meter to five meters, um, and all they're looking at here is how far the kids can strike the ball on the ground, left and right. Very, very simple test. Uh, doesn't need to be too scientific or too, too in the face of the kids. It's simply start of the year, end of the year, middle of the year. Just check the kids' progression, how far they can simply strike the ball. Again, great resource there with Kilkenny GEA, and well worth a look at. So in terms of our intermediate skill challenge, uh, this is referring to the Connet GEA. Um, they're a simple skill test. Again, skills tests can be, uh, maybe when coaches hear that, they think it has to be very high tech and scientific. And uh, this, this is borderline between skill test and drill. So simply in the video, you'll see uh, four players in a square. Uh, the aim of the game is, uh, they're looking to strike the ball to hands, and there's very, varying how varying ways they can they can score or get or get graded in this game. Uh, so they'll start off in a certain area. Once they complete all left side of striking, they'll go to the right hand striking, and then they'll move out. So the square will increase. Um, in the video, there's a great commentary, so it's easy to follow along. Uh, really, really simple test to see how your players are improving. Uh, and one of the real key elements of uh, of the game, particularly that age group, that video in particular targets I think under twelves, um, and a really good indicator of how your players are hitting the ball left and right, uh, and a really simple way of t of testing and keeping an eye on them as as they're going. In terms of our advanced skill testing, again, uh, you, this could be anything between under twelves uh, to under sixteens, and for this skill test, I'm referring to the Middleton GEA. Uh, there, um, there we document on skill testing, very very straightforward again. And again, I would re I would emphasize that it doesn't have to be scientific. It can be somewhere between a, a drill and a, and a test, maybe three times a year that the coach can keep an eye on things. So this drill simply uh, focuses on striking the ball in the air over the bar from a distance. Three distances are set, 15 meters, 20 meters, and 25 meters. That would be nearly perfect for an under-12 team. Again, if you're looking at an under-16 team, um, you, could, you could change those, dis those distances maybe to the 45, the 65 whatever you feel comfortable with. Again, three distances, three attempts, as it's seen in the diagram there. 
a, a really straightforward, simple way of keeping an eye on your players and, and, and helping the coach then say, player X might not be striking the ball as far as, far as we want. Let's do a bit more work on that. Uh, again, all really basic, straightforward stuff that helps players know where they're at, helps coaches know where they're at, and helps maybe identify areas where, where coaches can work on and where individuals can work on by, them, by themselves. Uh, really straightforward stuff and all well worth a look at. After learning the proper technique to ground block, a simple test could be the zigzag block. The focus here should be more on the blocking player getting into the correct stance and attempting to block more, uh, more so than to how successful they are stopping the ball. On the coach's call, both players run out round the code, with player A stepping in to perform the block with player B trying to strike the ball through them. Another beginner blocking drill or test could be the ground clash. There's numerous ways where you, how you could advance this or make it easier, but a simple way of starting it off would be where two players, A and B, line up beside a cone, and on the coach's command, they step forward trying to clash in the ball. You could also use uh, a ball in the peg so the ball doesn't roll away, or the balls on the rope, which keeps the balls on a nice straight line. Make sure and complete three clashes from your left side and three clashes from your right side. For an intermediate blocking drill, we will progress to the airborne. So it will be a frontal airborne block. The easiest way to do this would have the coach aiming to strike either an imaginary slitter or striking a slitter to begin with. The player attempts to step in and block the coach Test blocking the coach striking from either side, as there is a slight difference. Also, the player would be attempting with two hands at the grip of the hurley, but as they advance up the grades, move to only the dominant hand on the hurl. Again, this could be changed to be set up with three players, A and B standing on the outside with a ball or an imaginary ball each, and the player in the middle is attempting to block and then turn and go and block the other one. The scoring system could be how many blocks you make in a certain time or making sure that they block maybe two on the right side and then two on the left side and taking a score of it. An advanced blocking test would be hit the target. Here in hit the target, player A plays the ball to B. B then attempts to strike the ball onto D. Meanwhile, player C attempts to make a block. Curtailing B to strike within the grid will allow for player C to get a better chance of attempting a block. This again could be set up with just two players. With player A on the end line with the catch nets behind them and player B standing five metres away. Player A tosses the ball to player B who catches it and then attempts to strike to a target point on the catch nets. These could be a goals, they could be a cone, as long as it's just straight ahead. This target allows player A then to step in and to try attempt the block. Note, player A doesn't have to be on top of player B to perform the block, rather aiming to block the flight of the ball. This encourages them to keep their head up and their eyes on the ball. If successful, then player B can move back another three to five meters and repeat. If player A is unsuccessful, then you might leave player B where they currently are, or you might move them closer to player A. Again, if this test breaks down, say when player A throws the ball, B drops it, just stop, reset, and go again. A beginner hooking test could be the swing and hook. Player A stands an arm and a hurl's length behind player B. On the coach's call, player B swings an imaginary ball, and player A attempts to hook them. Possibly complete from the left and two from the right side. An intermediate hooking test could be the chase and hook. Player A, the player who will perform the test, is two meters behind player B. On the coach's call, player B advances to strike the ball on the right side. 
Player A then must react and prevent player B from striking the ball by performing the hook. Complete two from each side. Alternatively, if your players are a bit more advanced, player B could throw out the ball in a random direction, either left, right or in front, and player A must react and, to, and complete the hook. For an advanced test for hooking, going for goal is a good one. Player A, who is attempting the hook, hand passes the ball to player B. Player B then turns, runs forward, and will attempt to shoot for a goal only after they cross the 20 meter line. Player A has to track the player and then attempt to hook. After completing it on one side, so say the left side of the goals, you move over to the right side and complete it again. This could be done twice by each player and then re uh, reverse the rules. Thanks for tuning in to our podcast. To leave you with a few tips, don't be, a, don't be afraid to try some of these skills testings within your own sessions. They don't really have to be that very difficult. Try your best to keep them as simple and as fun as possible. Really and truly, all it is is adding a scoring system into your drills and being able to keep a check of that there with your players for the development of themselves and of your coaching throughout the season. Another good thing to do with it is, is you're giving your players something to go away and practice between your sessions. So if you set an OE test each night, they're able to go away and practice it. And a good idea would be to start the session the next time with that test to see how they've got on. Maybe you don't do it every week. Maybe you do it every other week or once a month. But it's a good idea to try and get through them. Finally, Another good thing about it is, is it's a great way for your club to pass your players on. So if you're taking the under 10s and you're passing them on to the under 12s, you're able to pass them on at the end of the year with a wee note to that coach saying, here's the players, here's what they're good at now, here's what they need a wee bit more work on. That way, you're passing your players on in a better place. Looking ahead, we have one more podcast coming up on the 17th of December before the Christmas break. This one will be looking at moving from Go Games. It's not doing away with Go Games. Basically what it's saying is you've got your players through the Go Games system and now you're getting them into full set of games. And how do you go about that? We hope that you'll tune in for that one. Then after Christmas, we have four sessions coming up, which will have a number of special guests coming in to talk about their experiences in each of the four areas. If you have any questions or queries on any of the topics we have covered in the previous three uh, podcasts, the upcoming Move to Go games, or any of the four that's coming up after Christmas, we would love to hear them from you. So please comment below on anything you'd like to see or anything you'd like to query. As I mentioned before, the links are in the description of everything that we have mentioned within this year. And we hope that we look at these resources because there is a number of people, counties and clubs that have went to an awful lot of effort to try and make these resources. No point in you reinventing the wheel why you don't use them and change them around to suit your needs. Thanks very much for tuning in and stay safe.